Okay, welcome back from break. As promised before, we're going to talk about risk governance. And again, one of those terms that kind of gets confused. Sometimes we hear risk management, sometimes we hear risk governance. What's the difference? All right, so when we're talking about governance, first of all, when we talk about the accountability for the organization, who is ultimately accountable? Who is legally responsible? Where does the liability fall? That's senior management, right? Those folks with C in their job description, the board of directors. So those entities are responsible for governance of the organization. They're responsible for the vision. They're responsible for compliance for the organization. They're responsible for setting the objectives of the organization and ultimately making sure that we accomplish those objectives. So governance, when we talk about risk governance, that's going to be senior management, board of directors. And remember, we use that term risk appetite. What's our overall philosophy on risks? What's our broad frame? You know, where are our risk thresholds? And really even going into what's our tolerance for specific risks. All right. So that's risk governance. And when you look at governance, those those senior managers, the board of directors, they're responsible for answering four questions. Are we doing the right things? Is the organization accomplishing what we should be doing? Are we in compliance? Are we... Um, are we delivering value to our stakeholders, right? Um, are we doing them the right way? Are we doing them effectively, efficiently, in such a way that has integrity and is following in line with ethical behavior? Are we doing them well? And then are we getting the benefits? So again, you know, that's senior management's are we accomplishing the things that our organization has set out to accomplish them? Are we doing them efficiently, effectively, with um, maintaining compliance and ethical standards? And are we delivering value to our stakeholders? That's kind of how you can sum up those four questions. So governance has to make sure that the foundation and the structure to answer all of those questions, yes, has to make sure that that's in right, uh, that all those uh, elements are in place and that we have the structure and the foundation in order to accomplish those. So we want to make sure some elements that we can do as senior managers, CISOs, um, you know, and, and other senior executives, make sure that we establish and maintain a common risk view. Making sure that we as an organization, throughout the organization, sometimes you'll hear that idea of being holistic, the entire organization works as a whole or has the same holistic view of risk. We understand what our risk tolerances are and what our general risk appetite is. And then, as senior managers, part of risk governance says we're going to incorporate risk management into everything we do. For so long, we've looked at information risk or information security risk and business risk. And the truth is, information security risk is business risk. Excuse me, there was a yawn. That means I've not had enough coffee. Ah, much better. Um, so for so long, we've looked at these, you know, information security here, business processes over there. And what we have to do is make sure that we understand information security risk is a risk to the business and that the foundation of making good decisions should always come back to risk management. You know, um, if, if you've ever been somewhere that made decisions based on the idea, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think we've all been in an organization, you know, that's used that philosophy, at least in some instances. Well, what that saying is, let's wait until it is broken until we fix it. So we're very much in a reactive posture. Um, you know, sometimes we make decisions based on, eh, it'll be too hard to change. Well, that's not risk management. Other instances, we've made decisions based on, oh my gosh, look at all the threats that are out there. So let's fortify, fortify, fortify. Let's spend all this money when, you know, it's only a risk if there's a threat and a vulnerability. And the amount of risk is also going to be driven by the value of our asset. So we might overcompensate for threats. So when we're looking to make risk-aware business decisions, 
we understand what the steps of risk management are and we understand how to implement it, not to make over or under decisions, but to find the controls and the security decisions that are in place to make decisions that are right for our enterprise. And what that means is we're spending the appropriate amount, no more than no less, to provide the degree of security we need based on the value of our assets. Okay, So the last piece of that's really where oversight comes in. All right, are the risk controls implemented appropriately and are they working? And really, when I ask you, are my controls working? What I'm asking is, are the controls meeting their objectives, right? And to what degree? And if I don't have those objectives outlined ahead of time, and if I don't have strategies for monitoring, and if I don't have details on when to monitor, how to monitor, all those different pieces. So, you know, if that's the element, you know, that's what we've got to have in place in order to continue with oversight. So it's not enough just to put the controls in place and take off for the beach for a couple of weeks. We have to make sure the controls are in place and that they continue to work effectively. And that means that not only are we monitoring their performance, but it also means that on a periodic basis, at least once per year, we go back and we conduct a risk assessment because the threat landscape is always changing. What's a threat today wasn't a threat last year, right? New threats emerge all the time. So what we have to do is in a year from now, after we've implemented our controls, come back in a year from now and say, what's the value of our assets? What are we protecting? What's it worth? Today, what are the threats and what are our vulnerabilities? What are the vulnerabilities that are left over with the controls we have in place, right? They res uh, mitigated risk to the acceptable level previously. Are they still mitigating risk appropriately? All right. And um, if not, what do we do about it, right? Well, we go back and visit the drawing board again and we implement additional mitigating strategies. Now, the risk management, so that was risk government, this oversight, this setting of the direction, determining the philosophy, the general approach. It's management's job to figure out the how. I often think of governance as doing what management figures out how. So what we want to do is we want to operate in this environment. We want to maintain compliance with industry standards and best practices. We want to maintain legal compliance, blah, 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 blah. Management says, okay, here's how we're going to do it. So the management piece means that we're going to plan. We're going to build. We're going to run and monitor. And ultimately, we're going to make, we're going to accomplish the objectives that governance set for us. Okay. Um, this becomes very difficult because often the broad guidelines by uh, the senior management sets out, there isn't necessarily a roadmap in place. So that's where we as senior management, this is where we as risk management professionals, this is where we as technical leaders really have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. 